Being an art collector was not something I planned to be. It just happened. I met so much great and interesting art while exploring Second Life. And then I began to pick out pieces of art from my virtual home. Soon I ran short of space and got a bigger house. And then another. And suddenly I had nine buildings with art on my land. That's when I decided to get myself a gallery. Now I believe I have one of the most comprehensive private collections of virtual art in Second Life. My avatar was born on May 24th, 2011. It was a Tuesday and it rained. On the telly that showed the documentary fiction film My Avatar and Me by Michael Stolt and Bente Milton about a Danish filmmaker in Second Life. The film was funny and thoughtful. It made me curious and later that evening I joined Second Life. I wanted to experience the virtual world firsthand. One of the benefits by being an art collector is that you get to meet a lot of creative and interesting people. And by talking with the artist, I have enhanced my understanding of virtual art and the purpose of art in general. But I also learned that the Second Life artists are people just like you and me. When I first met Bruno, we didn't talk about art. We talked about hockey. Canadian hockey versus Danish hockey and I was quite surprised how much Bruno knew about Danish hockey. Virtual art has no limits. In the real world, the artist is restricted by the laws of physics. Those laws doesn't exist in Second Life. Here you can do anything you want. The only limitation is your fantasy. 
A piece of art can flow in the air around you. You can walk through it, or you can be a part of it. You can even be the art you create, just like the way Save Mio is working. Virtual art provides so much potential for the open-minded artist. As far as I know, I have most of the world represented in my gallery. But one never can be sure. Being in a virtual world gives you the opportunity to be who you wish. But I would guess that most of the artists in my gallery lives in either USA, Canada or Europe. Perhaps because the art from those regions is the art that I can relate to. It's a part of my identity and history.
I really can't pick out any favorite artworks in my own gallery. Each piece of art I have is there for a reason, and it would be unfair to the artist if I chose one over another. But in Second Life in general, I for sure have some favorite places that I like to visit. There's my neighbor in Second Life, the famous installation The Far Away by AM Radio that seems to have been there forever. And there's a two fish installation by Rose Bukowski. I also like the works by Yupalino Sugadjian, Bruno and Sika Ghost. And it's always a surprise to visit the installations by Giovanna Cerise. But if I should pick one work of art that really stands out, it has to be Save Me O. By being her own work of art, Save Me O is the only artist in Second Life that fully understands the potential of a virtual world. There is no common denominator in the way I collect the art. Sometimes I'm not even sure if I chose the art or the art chose me. I can pass by several pieces of art in Second Life or in a Flickr gallery and suddenly I see something that I just must have. And if the artwork is not for sale, then I have to negotiate with the artist. That's how I got Meryl Panthar and Starless Sweetwater in my gallery. Besides collecting art, I do enjoy the music scene in Second Life. Among my favorites is Molita Kwan, Jordan Rain, Kasi Ansar, Deceptions Digital, Toxo OK, and Engrama. They all represent different approaches to music. And when the music scene in Second Life joins forces with the visual art scene, then it really gets interesting. That's when the magic happens. The collaboration between Molly Taquan, Deceptions Digital and Save Me O are such great examples of that.
Virtual art is not that expensive. You can get a lot of great virtual art for the price of a chocolate bar in the real world. Some even for the price of a cigarette. Among the more expensive artworks in my gallery are those by Bruno, AM Radio, Toy Soldier Thor and Isuno Miyu. But having in mind the amount of time they spent creating the artwork, it's still a bargain. They come for the price of a Coca-Cola in the real world. My latest buy is the figure Mr. Sipper by Bruno. He's from her nightmarish singularity of Kumiko installation, where he sought out and killed the visitors. The only warning you got was the sound of his squeaky wheels. And once you heard them, it was too late. He would get you. And you had to return to the landing spot at the sim and start all over again. My gallery can be found at the Dreamworld North Sim, just next to the far away by AM Radio and Sigi Questi's photo gallery. 